Hi, welcome back. Of course, it is I, your friendly neighborhood spooky chick weirdo, Patricia Absinthe, as you clicked on me, you know, and as you read by the title. Today I'm reading even more ghost stories. Because in seventh grade, my science teacher said that I have a lovely voice for reading. <laughs> and because honestly, like, I mean, I want to upload more here. But I don't really know what is amusing for you guys. Me-wise, I mean, you got suggestions, you got something stupid you want me to do, feel free to comment it below. But for today, we have another romantic good story. And I opened this one up and just literally saw the title is, I'll Dance on Your Grave. And the first sentence is, when I came across this story, both the witchcraft and the indisputable physical evidence intrigued me. And I was like, so, get a wee bit comfy, hopefully. Oh no, I know, like, audiobooks, they help put people to sleep. I don't know, your goth mommy will <laughs> put you to sleep, hopefully. Maybe hopefully, I don't know. Is that a good thing to hope for? Meh. Let's dive in and see if we agree this is romantic. When I came across the story, both the witchcraft and the indisputable physical evidence intrigued me. During the 17th century, the Salem witch hunts were in full swing, and echoes of those turbulent times reverberated throughout the neighboring regions for many years after. The facts of the tale of Colonel Jonathan Buck might vary from storyteller to storyteller, but it is familiar to most people of Maine. Is it an urban legend or a haunting ghost story based on a horrific truth? Read the following, or listen to the following with an open mind and then decide. And hopefully if you are watching goth YouTubers of mediocre quality at best, you have an open mind. <laughs> The town of Bucksport, Maine was named posthumously after its founding father, Colonel, Flo Colonel Jonathan Buck. Married with six children, Colonel Buck person personified the word discipline. He was a stern and intolerant man who was both widely respected and feared by all who knew him. For many years, he served as the justice of the peace, and as such, he wielded a lot of power within the community. Not all his decisions were fair ones, and some of them were based on superstition and prejudice. Oh, we don't like him as much. I hope he got haunted. Ew, and they named a fucking town after him. Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm. One would come back to haunt him beyond the grave. His death on March 18th, 1795, represented the end of an era but his memory did not fade, especially for the large family that he had started. Ew. Who wants, like, your fucking racist grandpa sticking around? How is this romantic? Damn it, title, he got me excited. 57 years after he passed away, his children's children still remember him with awe. He had been buried in a plot in Booksport Cemetery with only a simple plaque to mark his final resting place. <laughs> his grandchildren thought it would be appropriate to honor his memory by erecting a large gravestone over his burial plot. They did so and were pleased with their efforts to honor their grandfather. Strangely though, within a year of the installation of the new tombstone, the outline of the lower leg of a woman appeared on the thick slab of stone. It was an odd reddish color similar to that of blood. Nobody could understand where it had come from, but the grandchildren were angry and upset that somebody had vandalized their grandfather's grave. Their prejudiced, unfair grandfather. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Much effort was made to remove the blemish. They tried to scrub it off, but the stain would not come out. They had stonemasons attempt to sand it off and to buff it, 
but to no avail. The shape of the female leg remained engraved in the stone. Finally, after many failed attempts, the stone was replaced, not once, but three times. Each time, the image reappeared. In his aspiration, Colonel Buck's heirs decided to leave it be. Today, his grave attracts many visitors, sightseers, and paranormal investigators alike, each group driven by a need to discover the truth. The truth is, fuck your racist grandpa. Well, what is the truth? There are several different versions of the story, but all concur on one thing. The shapely leg is not there by accident. Rather, it is the manifestation of a historic curse uttered from the lips of a woman condemned to death by the colonel. Ooh. Excellent. On, on him getting haunted. Even the name of the woman, an accused witch, is disputed. Was she Ida Black or was she Comfort Hinesworth? Was she an old hag or a young beauty? Had she given birth to Colonel Buck's illegitimate child? Or had she only shared her body with him? Did she die by hanging or in the hot flames of a funeral pyre? And did her leg roll out of the fire to land in the smoldering heap at the colonel's feet? As some say. What a fucking loser. So he, he falsely accuses his side piece, I guess, of being a witch and fucking kills her. I sure hoping she haunted him. Fuck your headstone. It is impossible so many years later to learn the true circumstances of the woman's execution, but what is certain is that she had been embroiled in an affair with the colony's most important official. When he tired of her, an easy solution presented itself. Colonel Buck accused her of being a witch and condemned her to death. He acted as accuser, judge, and jury. Three hundred years ago, that wasn't such a difficult thing for a man in his position to do. In neighboring Massachusetts, accused witches had been burned, lynched, drowned, or stoned on a regular basis, and these acts didn't evoke the same horror that they do today. Colonel Buck's falsely accused witch accepted her fate neither easily nor gracefully. As her life slipped out of body, she placed a curse upon the head of the man who had betrayed her so cruelly. Fucking good. The words she spoke shadowed the colonel for the rest of his life, his long life, and into the thereafter. Here are her words as reported in The Witch's Curse Fulfilled, Sun Up Magazine, January 7th, 1929. Ooh, I hope this is true. Aw, fuck, yeah. Okay, Jonathan Buck, listen to these words, the last my tongue shall utter. In the spirit of the one true and living God, I speak to you, you will soon die. Over your grave they will erect a stone that all may know where the bones of the mighty Jonathan Buck are crumbling to dust. But listen, all ye people, and may your descendants ever know the truth. Upon that stone will appear the imprint of my foot, and for, as, for all time, long after your accursed race has perished from the earth, the people will come from afar to view the fulfillment, and they will say, There lies the man who murdered a woman. Remember well, Jonathan Buck. Remember well. Oh fuck. See, you and your MLM schemes, this is a fucking girl boss. Colonel Buck died, lived to be 77, a long time in mortal years, but perhaps only the blink of an eye in the netherworld. The foot first appeared on the anniversary of the accused witch's death in the year that Colonel Buck was interred. Although skeptics often mention the inconsistencies surrounding the tale, many become believers when they find themselves standing in front of the grave of Colonel Jonathan Buck. Non-paranormal explanations about the mark on the slab are suddenly no longer credible. A tangible life force emanates from the shapely female leg. Most visitors are reluctant to reach out and run their fingers around the blood-red outline etched in the gray stone. A witch's curse, or the revenge of a woman who died unjustly? A tourist attraction, or a paranormal mystery? Whoever the woman was, her anger at Colonel Buck's fort was not subsided. I think this is her way of reminding us of the terrible injustice she suffered in the hands of Buck's founding father. 
Helpless to fight him in life, she haunts his final resting place from the grave. I do kind of disagree at that being in a romantic one. I mean, the other story was mm, debatable. I mean, I guess. Uh, I do rather enjoy, like, what is with, you can't just accuse a woman of being a witch and burn, like, I know back then you could, but what the fuck? What the fuck? And that's why it's so upsetting when men try to say, oh, not all men. It's like misogyny is still a thing. Like, sure, it's better. And hopefully if someone yells, you know, witch at you because you look a little spooky, you won't be burnt out of stake or guillotined in the 1970s, so not that long ago. Still, what the heck? <laughs> I really hope, I really hope that part is true. That she fucking cursed him. Well deserved. Well deserved. That part alone. You go, girl. Fucking get him, witch. I don't even give a shit if you're falsely accused and just your anger and willpower of that betrayal. I am pleased. I mean, I wish more was done to him while he was still alive and his long ass 77 years. And which he probably did indescribable horrible things like for all we know it could have been someone else he falsely accused seeing how i was talking about his prejudice like i could see naming a town to honor someone worthy of honor <laughs> doesn't really sound that worthy quite personally not well anyway uh i would recommend a, another video to fall asleep to at this point in time that one got me a little bit angry, just a tiny smidgy. <laughs> well, thanks for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed today's story. <laughs> story with lots of extra commentary. Don't um don't accuse your exes of uh, being witches and orchestrate their demise. That needs to be said. That is your the more you know moment of the day or else I hope they haunt you. Thanks for watching. Like this if you managed to get to this point. Don't like it if you think I'm a weird potato. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want. And I will be bringing you more spooky stories and my dumbass commentary.